Tom out there to all you uh, banjo fans. Uh, if you know anything about me, I played this a lot back in the 70s and in the 80s too. I uh, kind of let it go, primarily because I realized that the world did not need another Earl Scruggs or Pete Seeger, and I couldn't be either of those people, and nobody can really top the things that they did on this instrument. Um, Earl Scruggs invented bluegrass banjo picking, and he also developed a bunch of things called breakdowns, which are banjo pieces that he used to play with Flat and Scruggs, his band. Flat and Scruggs were the greatest bluegrass band that ever was, or ever will be. And uh, so yeah, there are a lot of players out there that try to play like Scruggs and do play like Scruggs, but yeah, and they will all do these breakdowns. Uh, Earl's Breakdown, Randy Lynn Rag, Flint Hill Special, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. And they will do their own thing. Uh, they will make, you know, subtle changes. But if you move one note off of what Earl Scruggs plays, it's not as good as him. Because his version is perfect. And his playing is perfect. <laughs> is a hard thing to be. So anyway, he played the bluegrass banjo, which was a Gibson banjo with a master tone, a master tone banjo, a Gibson master tone banjo, which had a resonator on the back that made the banjo even bigger around here and heavier, but the tone would come out through the holes around the edge and make it like twice as loud. I heard him live many times, and it was loud, and it was silvery, and it was like spark sparkling, and it was like like um, a machine gun. Those bullets would come out of that banjo. Very exciting. He transformed country music, and to this day, most banjo that you hear is bluegrass banjo or Earl Scruggs, three-fingered three style picking. See, now Earl Scruggs plays... That's Cripple Creek Scruggs style. But now, uh, if I were to do this without frailing, but doing the double thumbing, it would be... That's more of a folk style. And one of the best things that you can learn on this instrument, if you learn nothing at all, and, and one of the things that I find is that this instrument comes around every 20 or 30 years, like uh, Haley's Comet, you know. Back in the 20s, it was, uh, there was nothing but banjo. They had banjo orchestras. They played every single kind of music. They had banjo guitars, they had banjo mandolins, they had uh, all kinds of banjos, and they would be in big orchestras, and they'd be, wanka bink, wanka bink, wanka bink. you know, that's like the 1920s. Then the, the but the five string has this, this fifth string here, which dings along. It's a more of a rippling effect. It's a, not as uh, crude a sound and rough a sound. Now, this is called a, a modal tuning. You take it back to G. And you take that B string up a half a time. Now this is used for a lot of mountain music, and there are many modal tunings. There's also a D tuning, which I'm not going to go into here. This is plenty for you right now. If you know about the banjo, you play the banjo a little, and you want to sing with it. Uh, and it might be of some use to some bluegrass players who might wonder how some of this stuff was done. 
Um, but you know, when you get into bluegrass, they are so specific and so good and uh, they won't dare show their face unless they can really play. Whereas a folk banjoist will show up and play a few chords and, you know, sing out a tune and everybody thinks that's all right. But if you look at Grandpa Jones, you know, he played for 40 years on the Opry. He frailed. That's what he did. He framed the banjo. He wrapped the banjo. He was a frailer. This particular modal style, it's a G tuning and you just raise that second string up half a, half a note half a full tone. And what it gave, it gave these songs, uh, the, the Ozarks and the, the mountain people are, are prone to sing a lot of uh, Francis James Child's English ballads that they brought over, uh, their ancestors brought over, and that they would change and modify to fit the circumstances of the hard life they lived. And there were all kinds of talented people that would write songs about this or that. There was no photography. There was no sound recording. So it was all what they call the oral tradition of one person singing a song to the next person, usually changing it along the way as they went. So there'd be five or six versions of a song if later on. So this was the fun part about the folk thing. And that's what's fun about this 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 uh, instrument and this particular form of music is that it's uh, it's very flexible, and a lot of it nobody knows knows who wrote. But they were write a lot of songs about you know murdering each other and you know murdering your girlfriend, killing your wife, and you know, twenty verses of stabbing her, burying her, dragging her into the woods, you know all this stuff. Not great uh, Me Too uh, songs, uh, but uh, part of the tradition. A lot of uh, looking over the grave and saying goodbye to mom and dad. Just the, the most, the saddest uh, things you can think of. Uh, and so the modal tuning, uh, Ralph Stanley was really good at this. Every time I see him, he was always singing about dying. And so he was very good at it. He was a great banjo player. Uh, in the Scruggs style, and he wrote his own breakdowns too, like Scruggs did. Also loved Don Reno, it was another single string style, and Red Smiley and Don Reno are two of my favorites. Uh, Don Reno and he had his own style, he had his own little TV show, just like Flat and Scruggs. So there were lots of wonderful uh, creative people. I love the, uh, the Country Gentleman uh, and Eddie Adcock, his banjo playing, and uh, Charlie Waller, uh, what a great bluegrass guitar player uh, that guy was. Yeah, oh, what a great, great group. Those first two albums they made on Folkways Records, it was a funny place for them to be, um, are masterpieces. You can really hear everything. John Duffy, tremendous. Anyhow, the modal tuning is like this. So... Double thumbing this, and I'm singing. I courted pretty Polly the live long night. Courted pretty Polly the live long night. Left her next morning before it was light. Now, what he does uh, with pretty Polly is. Uh, he, he asks her to come and go with him, so Pretty Polly, I'm gonna frail it now. Pretty Polly, Pretty Polly, won't you come along with me? Pretty Polly, Pretty Polly, won't you come along with me? Go down that trail for our destiny to see. puts her in the grave and uh, stands over the grave and all the rest of it. And Now, uh, the great uh, songwriter Bob Dylan would use 
traditional melodies like that one and then put his own lyrics. And this is one song I used to do on the banjo. This is a melody that's uh, one of those modal melodies. It goes like this. This is a song that's always current. It's always worth singing because it's always happening. Come ye masters of war. You that build all the guns, you that build the death planes, you that build the big bombs, you that hide behind walls, you that hide behind desks. I just want you to know I can see through your mask. destroy you play with my world like it's your little toy you put a gun in my hand then you hide from my eyes then you turn and run farther when the fast bullets fly like Judas of old to deceive a world war can be won you want me to believe but I see through your eyes and I see through your brain like I see through the water that runs down my drain can never be hurled, the fear to bring children into the world, you threaten my baby, unborn, unnamed, and you ain't worth the blood that runs in your veins. you die, that your death comes soon, I'll follow your coffin in the pale afternoon, I'll watch while you're lower into your deathbed. The Masters of War. One more little thing on the banjo. This is fun to do. It is the Rasgado, which uh, which is from flamenco music. You take your fist and you unfurl it one finger at a time. <laughs> That's about it. Hope you enjoyed it.